Hello and welcome. This short film has been produced for people who have a hearing before the New South Wales Mental Health Review Tribunal. It shows how a typical tribunal hearing works and how you can participate. The hearing is about you and the tribunal wants to ensure that you have every opportunity to have your view taken into account in any decision that it makes about you. The tribunal has been established under the Mental Health Act. One of its primary functions is to ensure that any order it makes about you is the least restrictive order that is consistent with safe and effective care. The Act requires that the tribunal hearings not be unduly formal or technical. While we have to make legal decisions that affect you, we do our best to make the hearing reasonably relaxed for you. The Tribunal is an independent decision maker. This is an important safeguard that has been put in place by the Mental Health Act to protect you. We can be likened to a watchdog whose job it is to make sure that people who are subject to the Mental Health Act are receiving proper care and treatment and are not being kept in hospital or treated unnecessarily. We hear the evidence placed before the Tribunal and we make a decision according to law based on that evidence. When you appear at a tribunal hearing, in most cases, the tribunal will have three members. A lawyer who sits in the middle and presides over the hearing, a psychiatrist and an other member who is suitably qualified. For example, they might be a psychologist or a social worker. Some of our other members have a lived experience of mental illness or have a family member who has. All members have been appointed to the tribunal because their experience makes them suitable to hear cases such as yours. At the hearing, you may be represented by a lawyer who will be able to explain what to expect and answer any questions you may have. During the hearing, we will ask whether you or your lawyer would like to say anything or ask any questions of any witnesses, such as the doctor or a case manager. You or your lawyer may also call witnesses and present evidence if you wish to. You are entitled to have a support person with you, such as your designated carer or a family member or a friend. There is also a form available, if you wish, for you to write down anything you would like the tribunal to know about, which can be sent to the tribunal before the hearing. You can obtain this form before the hearing day from the mental health facility involved in your hearing. You don't need to use this form if you don't want to, but it may help you to think about whether there is anything you would like to say to the tribunal. Most hearings will take about half an hour and are held face to face, but sometimes we have hearings by video link. Now watch as we follow a tribunal hearing about a fictional patient named Jason. Jason has schizophrenia. He became quite unwell just over six weeks ago and self-harmed. He was scheduled and admitted to hospital. He appeared before the tribunal for a mental health inquiry and was made an involuntary patient for four weeks, which is about to expire. The good news is that he's been making a steady recovery in hospital, but is still experiencing some symptoms of his illness. The doctors fear that he may still be at risk of causing himself serious injury through self-harm or misadventure and are asking the tribunal to extend his involuntary patient order at a review hearing. They're hopeful that he will be ready to be discharged in a few weeks time, possibly on a community treatment order. Uh, hello and welcome. We are the Mental Health Review Tribunal. Uh, today we're here to conduct a hearing about you, Mr Jones. Uh, before we start, uh, there are a number of preliminary matters we need to attend to. Firstly, this hearing has been recorded, as are all tribunal hearings, and that's to ensure that we have a record of what takes place. Uh, we would like everybody present to give their name for the record, uh, but we will start by introducing ourselves. Uh, my name is Angela Brown and I'm the lawyer member of the panel today. And my name is David Bridges and I'm the psychiatrist today. Hi. And hello, I'm Lynn 
Andrews and I'm the third member on the panel today. Uh, we'll start with you, Mr Jones. If you could please just tell us your name. Jason Jones. May we call you Jason or would you prefer Mr Jones? Uh, Jason is fine. Uh, I'm Mrs Sharon Jones. I'm Jason's mother and Jason's filled out the forms to say that I'm his designated carer. Uh, Terry Mason, Legal Aid. Uh, I'm representing Jason this morning. And Dr Andrew Williams, I'm the Registrar looking after Jason. Thank you. Um, my name's Caroline, I'm the nurse on the ward today. Thank you, Thank you for that. Uh, now we just need to confirm the records and the reports that are before the tribunal today. I'll run through these. We have a report from you, Dr Williams, and some progress notes from the hospital file. Uh, Mr Mason, have you seen these documents? Uh, yes, thank you. I have been through those with Jason. Terrific. And Dr Williams, can you advise whether or not Jason has been given any medication which might affect his ability to participate in the hearing? Uh, no, he had his usual medication this morning and is able to participate in the hearing. Okay, that's great. Uh, Jason, you were recently seen uh, by a single member of a tribunal at a mental health inquiry and a four-week involuntary patient order was made. Uh, today your treating team is asking the tribunal to continue your stay in hospital as an involuntary patient. Uh, we are required today to consider whether or not you are a mentally ill person and whether or not you should remain in hospital or if there is a less restrictive alternative that would be appropriate. We are going to hear from you, your lawyer, your doctor, your mother and the nurse uh, your lawyer will be able to ask questions on your behalf and of course we will want to hear from you as well. After considering all this information, we will tell you our decision. Uh, Mr Mason, can I just check with you, have you had an opportunity to meet with Jason uh, and obtain instructions? Um, yes, I have. Um, Jason would like to go home as soon as possible. Um, he accepts that he's probably not ready to be discharged today. Uh, Jason, uh, this hearing is about you and it is important that we hear from you and your views about the proposed order. Uh, you've heard what your lawyer has had to say. Is there anything that you'd like to add at this stage? Like my lawyer said, I am keen to, to get out of here as soon as possible, but I, I accept that I probably need to be here for a bit longer. Okay. Uh, Dr Williams, thank you for your helpful report. Um, we've read that, but without going through all the circumstances that led to Jason being admitted to hospital, can you please tell us how he's doing at the moment and why you believe a further period of inpatient care is necessary? Mm. Well, Jason and I have discussed uh, the report. He's doing very well, certainly better than when he first uh, came to us. He uh, still has some active symptoms, uh, such as thought disorder and auditory hallucinations, but these are uh, improving. Uh, we commenced him on antipsychotic medication approximately three weeks ago and he responded well. Uh, he's uh, less distracted, uh, his uh, thoughts are clearer and uh, the voices aren't troubling him as much. I know Jason would like to go home but we've talked about him needing to stay in hospital a little while longer. Uh, I think it will take a few more weeks for Jason's symptoms to uh, resolve themselves to a point where he is uh, not at risk of harming himself or falling into misadventure. Uh, as this is Jason's first visit to hospital, it is uh, uh, most important that it is treated assertively. As, uh, the evidence shows that this is important in preventing relapse. Now, uh, given how Jason is at the moment, uh, we feel that he still needs treatment in hospital and there is no uh, less restrictive alternative at this time. So. Uh, our plan is to consider applying for a community treatment order uh, for Jason in a few weeks' time. Terrific. Um, Ms McDonald, is there anything that you would like to add from a nursing perspective? Yes. Jason's um, much more settled on the ward. He's doing really well. Uh, but he has been observed to be uh, hearing some voices and that's quite upsetting for him. Um, I agree that he does need a further period of time in hospital. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Jason, can you tell us how you think your treatment's going? Have you noted any improvements yet? Um, I feel a bit calmer now and I'm thinking more clearly. Uh, I don't find the voices as distracting as I did um, and the, the bad thoughts aren't bothering me as much. Um, I just I feel safer. Well, that's really good to hear. Have you noticed any unwanted side effects also? 
I, I don't like the injections. Yes. I, I know that they help, but they make me feel slow and right. sluggish. Yeah. That may improve with a bit of time as you get used to it. Can you tell us about any plans that you've got for when you leave hospital to keep yourself well? Um, um, my mum is, is here supporting me, which is a, a big help. Um, I'm going to go see my GP, which mm. is all I think I, I really need. Um, the doctors are talking about a community treatment order, which I just want to. I just want to find a job and get back to work as soon as possible. Okay. Okay. Mm. Thanks, Jason. I I'll just ask the doctor about that. Doctor, your plan appears to be appropriate and addresses Jason's current needs over the next few weeks. Has any thought been given to having the hospital's OT talk to Jason about um, returning to the workforce? He seemed to be working as a carpenter before he got unwell recently. Yeah. As uh, Jason continues to improve, he'll be seen by an occupational therapist and they'll work together on a recovery plan uh, with the aim of getting Jason back into the workforce. Mm, thank you. And Jason, can you tell us a little bit about the training you did as a carpenter? And is that something you'd like to go back to? Your previous employer seems to think that you're exceptional at your job. Um, yeah, I finished my apprenticeship and I, I worked for a few years. I, I enjoyed it and I was, I was good at it. I felt like I was good at it. Mm -hmm. That's great. And, uh, has the hospital social worker spoke to you about where you might live after your discharge and if you'd need any help with that? Um, not yet. Someone told me that, that she'd be along to see me though. Uh, do you have any questions of Dr Williams or um, the nurse? Yes, yes, thank you. Um, Dr Williams, um, you've heard that Jason accepts that he's not ready to go home today, but he's told me that he's finding his current ward placement a little claustrophobic and he wonders whether he might be able to be moved to a ward where the other patients aren't as unwell. Mm -hmm. um, and he also would like to know whether it would be possible if he could take some leave with his mother this week. Well, usually when people get better, we try to move them into a less restrictive ward uh, and give them some leave from there. We hope that that'll be the case for Jason in the next few weeks. Uh, this leave will give us a good indication of how he is coping and uh, when he's ready for discharge. Um, Jason has also told me that he would prefer to see his GP for medication when he's discharged. Um, is, is that possible? Uh, we will look at that closer to discharge and we will also uh, consider applying for a community treatment order at, uh, at that time. Yes, thank you, Doctor. Thank you. Uh, Mrs Jones, you've heard everything that's been said here today. Is there anything that you would like to add? Yes, well, Jason has definitely improved since he's been here in the hospital. He's uh, far more settled than he was, but I don't think he's ready to come home yet. We are looking forward to him being discharged. We want him to get back to work and to resume his life. And the doctor's spoken to us about uh, the early warning signs so that we know what to look out for if there is a next time. Okay, good. Look, thank you everybody. Um, we just need to take a quick break just to consider all the written material and the oral evidence that has been given at this hearing. Uh, before we briefly adjourn, is there anything anyone wishes to say? Uh, Mr Mason, do you have any no, further you. questions? Okay, all right then. Well, we'll just leave for a short moment. Thank you. Thank you for waiting. Um, Jason, after considering all the evidence today, including your views and submissions from your lawyer, uh, the tribunal is satisfied that we should make a, an order for you to remain here for further care and treatment in hospital. At this time, this is the least restrictive option available for your safe and effective care. Uh, we are satisfied that at present uh, you continue to experience active symptoms of your illness and that there's a real risk of serious harm. Our concerns are that if you were to be discharged at this time, you wouldn't get the treatment you need to reduce your symptoms, and in this state, you could be at risk of serious harm to yourself, or you might in invite unwanted attention from others. Uh, this is a serious harm that this order is seeking to avoid. 
Uh, it is very pleasing, however, to hear that you have shown some improvement since the last tribunal hearing. Uh, you did present your views very well today and we thank you for that. Uh, at this stage, you're not quite ready for discharge. We are therefore ordering that you continue to be detained in hospital as an involuntary patient. Now, the tribunal will only review you in another three months' time if you happen to be in hospital. This order that we're making today doesn't necessarily mean that you will need to stay in hospital uh, for the entire three months. As soon as you are well enough to leave hospital, uh, the hospital is under the obligation to discharge you. Uh, we've heard today that there are discussions about a possible community treatment order being applied for in a few weeks' time. This will also require another uh, tribunal hearing. Uh, this now concludes the hearing for today. I wish to thank everybody for uh, attending and we wish you well, Jason, with your recovery. Uh, Mrs Jones, I would like to thank you for coming along today. It's always good for the tribunal to meet and hear from family members who are involved in supporting their loved one. So thank you very much for that. That's the end of the hearing. Thank you.